Hello and welcome to The Vile Theon, a short little visual novel uh, available on Ichio and developed by Nemle, I believe. And well, as far as I know, it's apparently a dark comedy kind of game, I guess, where there are there are a lot of human sacrifices, I guess, maybe something like that. You're like a high priest serving some kind of Cthulhu-esque god. Something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Content warning, I guess. There's, apparently there's a lot of violence and explicit language. You know, something like that. Oop. It looks interesting, though. P particularly the art. You know, it's like anime art, sort of. Let's see. So, Anon. Oh, great Viathon. Or Theon. How do I say that? Devio Theon. Please hear our prayers. I would, but you're not Lin. My sincerest apologies. Lin has come down with a fever. I guess, you know, even with like an evil apocalyptic cult, you gotta be still, you know, are vulnerable to being sick. You gotta have your sick days. But I assure you, I've been serving this temple for years. I'm every bit as capable as the fuck you are. Get me Lin right now. Okay, this is already starting off. I swear. I didn't know an ancient god would have a, uh, have a, uh, such a aggressive temperament. Yes, my apologies at once. So Brat opens the door. Yeah. Good day. We need Lin at the temple. So what? The Brat closes the door. <laughs> well, hey, Marrow, quit joking around. You get us all killed. Hello. Okay, that's Lin. A casual t-shirt. Uh, sorry, Lin. The Vile Theon won't hear me out after all. As asking for you. All right. So off to work he goes. <laughs> you <laughs> called? Oh, I guess you really are sick. Try not to die. I will. Well, will what? Die? Well, try not to die. Good, good. Say, what do you miserable humans need from me now? <laughs> Lynn pukes. This is the worst offering I've ever received. <laughs> He's just vomit. I'm so sorry. Never mind, carry on. So, what did the great Deviathion say? They agreed to vanquish the flying monster. Wonderful, praise to Deviathion! He'll choose, uh, choose a sacrifice within the next few days. I see. I'll let everyone know. You go home and rest. Thanks. Oh, and Anon? What is it? I left you a surprise at the altar. Hmm? Okay. Just so you know, this little village here sits in the middle of nowhere. If you've ever been to nowhere, you know there isn't anything there. Except nothing. There's a whole bunch of nothing. And okay, thank you, narrator. Nothing, and then this stupid little village no one has ever heard of. It doesn't have a name. That's how insignificant it is. The only reason this village hasn't completely vanished off the face of the earth is because of the Vileon. A magnificent, glorious, beautiful, wonderful, fearsome, great, incredibly benevolent deity. Hmm, I wonder who the narrator is. It protects this piece of shit village and the crappy humans within. Why are you, so, why are you swearing all this so much? Come on. Have some class. And all I ask in return is a human heart or two. Hearts are Devalthion's favorite snacks. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Devalthion is the best thing to ever grace this land. The following evening, Lin gets a visitor. Uh, you're a high priest Lin, right? Yes, can I help you? Um, well... Sit down anywhere you like. What? What are you looking at? That's just my brother Meryl. Do you want him to leave? No, that's okay, I guess. So what can I do for you? It's just... This, okay? Do you think this is what I think it is? A hideous new tattoo? No, that's not what that is. Okay. That is the mark of the great Devialtheon. This man is a lucky one. Hmm, yes, I'm sorry. Damn it, I thought so. Uh, damn it. God damn it. Uh, please, have a drink. Lin offers the bawling man a bottle of wine along with a glass. But man must have missed the glass since he pours liquid directly into his mouth. Right. Some of it drips onto the carpet never to come off again. Mm, you, ruined, you ruined the carpet? What do I tell my wife? And the kids? What do I do? Well, the Viathan has chosen you, my friend. You do what you have to do. Let's 
going to hurt, isn't it? I believe so. <laughs> Who's going to do it? Oh, it's the other me, your High Priest Randall. Do I at least get to choose? Who would you prefer? You. I've seen what a sloppy job that Baldi does. Then I'll do it. Thanks, I guess. You should go to your wife. Yeah. Okay. Well, just some human sacrifices. I don't know where... I, I gotta be honest, I don't know where this story is going, necessarily. Or just, you know, it's just human sacrifice. It's just an excuse to just murder people? Uh, man, I can't get out of this, can I? I'm sorry. Oh well, that's it then, huh? I spent my whole life working and this is it? What a useless life that was. I'm glad to be over soon. I don't say that. Your sacrifice will ensure the safety of us all. It's a very noble way to go. But why me? Lin can't come up with a polite way to tell this guy to get lost. <laughs> this sucks. Fix me a real strong drink when the time comes, okay? I can do that, yes. You better. And off stumbles the man with a bottle of red wine in hand. It wasn't even his, but fine, keep it, you petty thief. <laughs> we'll all be glad once you're dead. Why is this narrator, I assume, is divine? Why is it it's so rude? This god is so rude. Can't we get, like, a more polite one? You know? Like, you can keep those human sacrifices and everything, but just have a more polite evil god. You know? It would just make the whole process more tolerable. Anyway, he's gonna... Is he gonna make it home? I certainly hope so. Yeah, can't have him down his own card, can we? Meryl. What? Was I last supposed to say that out loud? Well, let's not start this again. Fine. All I'm saying is that you can offer animals' hearts to your god. Meryl, please. What? There's plenty of those around. What makes that guy's heart so much better than a cow's or a pig's? But neither you nor I have any say in that. Oh, this is so stupid. You see, Meryl isn't that smart. In fact, Mero is a drooling moron. This is very, this is a very biased narrator. You would have to be a moron not to worship the great Devaltheon, the sole savior of this village, the kind and gentle god. But Mero doesn't. Therefore, Mero is a moron. Moving on, they hold a ritual the very next evening. Hey, Lin, feeling better yet? Much better, thank you. I heard you puked on Devaltheon. <laughs> Oh, not exactly. I puked on its feet. Leviathan has feet. I mean where its feet would be? Ah, oh, details. Who cares? Do you think I could perform the ritual this time? The sacrifice asked me himself. Aw, oh, man. Well, maybe next time. What you looking for? Well, nothing. Mero isn't here. Ah. There she comes. Hello, Anon. Good evening. Or, who said that? Oh, that was Randall, actually. Hello, Anon. Good evening. The sacrifice has been captured. Oh, you ran? Yeah, yeah, the usual. So the bright idea to make a run for it. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you so much for not lifting a finger, Randall. Really helpful. Eh, you make an old man like me run. So heartless. I saw you running just fine yesterday. Wasn't as old yesterday as I am today. That is such a load of... All right, then. I'll go prepare the sacrifice. Looks like you had some second thoughts. Who wouldn't? Listen, my wife just gave birth to our second child. She needs me. Uh-huh. Um, no, get sacrifice, please. Lin nods along to the man's pleading, but he doesn't actually listen. He has been at this for years now. He has heard every sob story you can think of. You might think Lin has become jaded, but the fact is that he never cared in the first place. He's, he's just a psychopath, I guess. He's a perfect high priest for this evil god. To him, strangers and their tragedies are just some strangers' tragedies. That's the kind of person he is. Berries or vanilla? Honestly, it tastes the same anyway. Only the scent is different. So, kind of like tea. Or at least a tea from Old Margaret's store. At that price, you think? The man doesn't care about Old Margaret's store, nor tea. He's at Dev's door. He doesn't give a rat's ass about the quality of some goddamn tea he wouldn't be able to afford even if he wasn't dying. But it's not the tea that Lin is offering him. Here. Huh? Drink. It'll make you brave. The, okay. the man drinks as he is told, briefly wondering if he would have preferred the berry version. Perhaps he cared a little bit after all. But his mind doesn't stay intact long enough to reach a conclusion. Okay. I want you to know. That everyone appreciates your selfless act. I want you to know. 
that you are lucky. You get to be the one with the Viotheon. And off they go to merry, jolly, happy, fun ritual murder party. Oh, yes. I like the art. <laughs> Everyone's wearing masks with big, nice smiles on them. Sure, the masks made it a bit difficult to drink, but they were absolutely necessary to keep the mood pleasant. You see, sometimes people forget what a joyous event this is supposed to be. Especially the family members of Sacrifice tend to bring everyone down. But not tonight. Everyone is in high spirits. They're all singing and dancing and chanting. The Valtheon! The Valtheon! The Valtheon! Lin's dagger glimmers as it's lifted up. And the man still beating hard is offered to the Valtheon. I assume I don't know how to say that correctly. The Vile. The Valtheon. And eats it with great delight. Everyone cheers. They're so happy that the Valtheon is happy. How nice! Everyone is so nice. They party through the small hours of the night. Hooray! Well, eventually everyone goes home. Lin looks especially graceful as he slips on some ice and lands on his ass. Okay. He can't quite get the key work. Or get the key to work. Meryl. But Meryl doesn't care. Lin spends quite a while attempting to unlock the door. and get to the point where his fingers go numb from the cold, but alas, he gets the door open. Meryl, you heathen! Where are you? Meryl. Mm. I can't believe you. Why weren't you at the ceremony? Be because I caught your stupid coat. <laughs> okay, we have a choice now. By the way, there is apparently decisions to make in this game. That might affect your ending, but let's see. Um, Let's, I don't know. Let's say this. That doesn't matter. I guess we'll, we'll play the we'll, we'll play along, you know. Uh, this weird village th tradition where we worship an ancient evil god for some reason. Do you have any idea how dis disrespectful you're being? Uh, get over it. I'm tired. I don't care. What kind of example do you think you're setting? Oh well, the high priest's brother didn't show up. Why should I? It's only a ritual that allows his village to remain in existence. Like it's my fault. I got sick. You're the one that carries all the flu crap home from the temple. So I don't know, wash your hands more often, Mr. Holy Man. <laughs> or wear a mask too, social distancing. I see. But even so, Meryl, that man just gave his life for this village. For you. It's really important you show up to appreciate that. Is that what you call it? Huh? He gave it? More, not like you took it or anything. Don't be like that. I wish there was another way too. I kind of doubt that. I really do, but as things stand right now, we don't have a choice. You chose to be a priest, because I had to. Oh, right, right, keep telling me that. You just had to, poor you. It has nothing to do with, say, money. Okay, it was the, it's Simpsons, you know? Why, you little... And who do you think I'd make that money for? Well... Oh, domestic abuse? Don't worry about it, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just as a joke. You know, isn't that, it is pretty messed up, you know, in The Simpsons, how... Uh, uh, Homer just keeps choking out Bart. It's just a joke, apparently. <laughs> well, well, fuck. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have raised my voice at you. So, um, good night, Meryl. Yeah. Lin feels a little down about choking his brother. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a little bit down about that. But it's not like the little shit dies, so he's just being dramatic. Again, the narrator. Maybe I, I mean I should probably just read it as the vile thought, you know. Maybe he's, he's a narrator, so I guess. Sure, would be nice if this house had some parents on it. Some <laughs> sure would be nice if this house has some parents in it, but that is something to reflect upon another time. It is a brand new day, and what a glorious day it is! The Viathon has defeated a flying monster that was looming over this useless village. I bet you forgot all about that beast already. But don't feel bad. It was the only rare reason that they sacrificed that man, after all. All is well now, thanks to the great Devaltheon. Len, my favorite. I was hoping you would visit today. Yes, I wanted to ask you if the ceremony was to your liking. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm very pleased. So pleased, in fact, I have a gift for you. Hmm? Come on closer. I won't bite. I'm quite full thanks to you, my precious. My pet. I said closer, you little shit. I made this just for you. Go on, put it. Put it on. This isn't made from the sacrifice, is it? Does it look like human remains to you? Rude. 
It's my old bones. Um, you have new bones then. Obviously. So, do you like it, my dear? Well, um, haha. <laughs> it's like, unlike anything I've ever been given before. It's not just beautiful. Those bones still emit a bit of my aura. So don't be too thrown off if creatures start running away from you. I don't feel anything, though? Yes, well, humans here are used to my presence. But outside the village, anything that's conscious will run for its life. That's how fearsome I am. <laughs> now, why would I ever want to leave the village? Ah, uh, you wouldn't. But that's not the point anyway. I'm giving you a token of my affection, you dumb bastard. <laughs> Appreciate it. I do. I just don't know what to say. Say thank you, great Valthon. I'll forever cherish his holy blessing for your divine grace. Thank you, Dev. I'll wear it every day. I feel like... I don't know, I feel like, um, Deviathion is just our boyfriend, you know, at this point. Very abusive one. Anyway. Oh, call me that again, I'll crush your scroll. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if your boyfriend should do say that to you on a daily basis. But he is, uh, I guess, an ancient evil god, so... Huh. Nothing worth mentioning happens for a while. Nice and peaceful days go by under the loving care of Deviathion the Benevolent. Obviously. And soon the seasons change. Summer has come with all these disgusting bugs and mosquitoes and oh the humanity. Oh god merciful Deviathion, deliver me from this fucking humidity. I gotta, you gotta get a humidifier, you know? The nights are nice and cool though. Eh. Ah. Omero, you're still awake? No, I'm just standing here with my eyes open. Clearly asleep. Uh -huh. Aren't you tired? Of you, yes. Right, I'll leave you to it. Lin. Hmm? It's the anniversary of Mom's death tomorrow. Right, it's been two years, hasn't it? What? One, Lin. It's been only been one year. Oh. I'm guessing you have work tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, I figured. Um, well... I'm... I have to get some sleep. Good night. The sun is glaring down full force. Three priests sit in the shade having lunch. Well, two priests are having lunch. One is gazing into the distance, towards the graveyard. So what if she died a year ago? It doesn't matter if I don't go visit her grave today. It's not like she won't be dead tomorrow too. What does it matter if I never go? What is she gonna do about it? Not talk to me? Well, Meryl might not talk to me. Huh. Those are the kinds of thoughts he battles with. Everyone and their dead mom knows the correct course of action. Let your sniveling brat of a brother throw his fit. You got work to do. Lin shouldn't even be thinking about this in the first place. But no. For whatever reason, Lin has a soft spot for his insufferable little brother. Yeah, These robes are killing me. Tell me about it. It's the humidity. My, my aunt said it's humid because of the flooding. I don't know. Maybe. But I'm pretty sure it's the rain. Which causes the flood. No, I think the flood is caused by the ice and the mountains melting. And that's caused by this heat. Whatever. What do you think, Lin? Hmm, I'm sorry, what? Are you okay? Yes. You seem a bit... gloomy. It's nothing. Or actually, it's my mother's death anniversary. Do you think you could cover for me? Mm, well, I would, but it's your turn to pray to the Great Devialtheon. Oh, come on, let the kid go. I'll cover for you, but you'll do my next mass. Oh, thank you. And off he goes, the idiot. On his way down the stairs, he runs into a band of villagers. They attempt to tell him something, but Lin is in too much of a hurry. So they find Rando and uh, Anon instead. Please, hear me out, I'm... Ma'am, we're on a lunch break. Some goddamn temple this is. <laughs> uh, don't mind him. I'll be glad to hear your worries. It's the crops! All this water is causing him to mold! Oh? We've done everything we can, but if the flooding doesn't stop soon, the whole harvest is ruined. How will we last through the winter? Please, you have to help us. Well, you can all pray to the Great Devalthion right over there. We've prayed. We prayed our hearts out, it's no use. Let us see the god in person, please. Although so that's kind of weird, you know. It's funny how, like, in a lot of fantasy uh, stories, often you don't really get to meet the god in person, but, you know, in this story you do. Like, he's just right there, you know. The god is just right there, just hanging out, you know. Just chilling out. <sighs> please calm down. Well, I'll die without food. And so will you. I understand. We'll take care. We will take care of it. I'll speak to the Great Devalthion in your stead. Thank you. The villagers are satisfied with that and leave. Wait, what now? Looks like the Great Devalthion doesn't feel like helping us. Do you think we should, um, you know? Oh, I absolutely think we should offer a sacrifice. 
My neighbors have an especially nasty new bird who we could- Oh my god, the merciful Leviathan! You will not finish that sentence, I swear. Alright, alright, I'm kidding! <laughs> Let's go see the Leviathan. Neither of you are Lin. Please forgive us for that. Lin has a family matter to, to attend to. There's nothing more important than me. I should smack him in the head so hard it falls off. Your sister is such a yandere god, and he just really wants Lin. Ah, uh, well. How dare he! Yes, he is the rudest, stupidest boy. But please hear our prayer. I'd like to offer you my neighbor's newborn child in exchange for a dry spell. Ah, don't listen to this moron. Oh, merciful Devathion. He talks out of his ass. We need a drought. We need a drought, that's a fact. And the baby's noisy. And so I'm sorry for connecting a few obvious dots. No, you just want... Why am I being subjected to watching two monkeys bicker? Uh, my deepest apologies. Please disregard what he just prayed for. You only want to stop the flooding. Right. You don't get like getting your feet wet, huh? Pathetic humans. That and we all will die of the crops rot. You'll always die. Too much water, you die. Too much too little water, you die. Is there any single sip back you can't handle without dying? Well, that's why we come to you, our beloved Deviathion. Our only hope, our only savior. Hm. That I am, aren't I? A messiah for your wretched species. Very well. I'll spare the crops despite this disaster of a prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Deviathion the Benevolent. This isn't how I accept my thanks and you know it. Of course, we will prepare the sacramental hall at once. Good. The faster you disappear from my sight, the better. Oh, just one tiny small insignificant request. Give it a rest already. It doesn't want the baby's heart. But don't worry your ugly little heads about that. I'll choose to sacrifice myself. And I know just who to pick. Dun dun dun. Hi there. Hi. I'm surprised you showed up. Me too, actually. Hmm. Well, I'm sure Mom's happy about it. Did I say? Uh, I skip work for this. I had to skip work to come. Oh yeah, but this is important. I'm gonna get an earful tomorrow. So I hope that you're happy. It's not about whether I'm happy or not. Yes, it is. No, it's about Mom. It is indeed. But now that I've shown up, can you stop giving me such a hard time about it? Ah. Why are you like this? You're supposed to come here because you care about her. Don't you feel anything? Anything at all? I feel annoyed and slightly bored. But I came anyway. Does that count for something? No, it doesn't. What do you want me to do? Yell hooray, hooray, happy death anniversary, mother. Congratulations for being a dad a whole year. I can't believe how badly you don't get it. Now, I did this for you. So when we go home, I don't want to hear another word about how I don't care. You just admit it you don't. Or did I? <sighs> just whatever. Let's go home. And so, they went home blissfully ignorant of the consequences of neglecting God. But Lin would soon find out all about it. But not as soon as Meryl, who found about it the very next morning. Okay. Uh, huh? Meryl noticed a dull ache on his chest, as if he'd been punched. A dagger. He takes a few double takes, but the mark remains. Oh, shit. Do you want coffee? Uh, but no. Okay. Why have we bother knocking? We're just gonna barge in anyway. Alright, alright. Meryl decides to collect himself. The last person he wants to find out on the mark is Lin. Just act normal. I'll think of something. I'm not even part of this religion. Just relax. Go drink some coffee. No, wait. I said I didn't want it already. Are you going out like that? Hmm? Oh. Crap, I completely forgot to change. Uh, you're just in, the, you're in a t-shirt. It seems like everyone in their casual clothes. These are pretty modern casual clothes, I feel like. I don't know what kind of era we're in. Apparently we're in like some kind of village where it grows crops and everything, but at the same time... It looks like a pretty modern house, I don't know. It's, uh... I'm gardening again today. So this is easier to watch. A wash. I mean, since it's black already, you know? I suppose. That made sense, right? This is normal, right? Say, Meryl. He thinks that something is up. Oh god, oh shit. Are, the, are our crops molding too? Huh? Who cares about that? Meryl? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll go see what I can salvage. Hmm. Don't worry about it. It'll be better soon. Anon dropped by last night. She said Devalotheon agreed to fix it. Oh. But 
I don't... I mean, it's just crops. I don't think it's worth killing someone over. How do you know there'd be a sacrifice? But, but because there isn't there always one? When the Vileton agrees to help, you know? Well, not always. But yes, this time there will be one. Speaking of which, Meryl... I need you to be present at the ritual this time. Oh, thank god, it's just about that. <laughs> I know you don't like it, but I'm getting a lot of crap for your behavior. Even Randall says unbecoming of you to let you off the hook. Oh, okay. Hmm? It's fine. Look, I need to get to the crops now, so... Alright, thank you, Meryl. Yeah, see you tonight. Oh my fucking god, what am I gonna do? You might be thinking there's no really no problem here. Clearly, Lin is far too accommodating when it comes to Meryl anyway. Standing up God for him and whatnot. But that's just how it is. After all, it's just the two of them now. Their father caught the plague when Meryl was just a kid. Daddy and the other infected agreed to leave the village. So it's bye-bye, Dad. He probably got eaten by monsters out there or something. Or perhaps froze to death during the winter. Either way, Meryl was left behind with his mother and Lin. Mother and Meryl bawled their eyes out. Lin didn't seem too bothered, and that bothered Meryl. Mother wasn't bothered, Lin was bothered. She's <laughs> like, bother, 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 bother. Mother didn't bother with Lin much in general. Several years later, Mother said to Meryl, <laughs> She's a smoker. Don't tell anyone, but I hope that lazy bastard next to her gets killed next. <laughs> I swear, he steals her vegetables at night. But it wasn't Mr. Wander that got sacrificed. It was her. Who do you suppose did the honors? Just casual face. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Our little Lin. Who else? There's a total of ha, three high priests in this village, but it had to be Lin. It's okay, said Lin. But Meryl didn't think it was okay at all. So you see, Meryl doesn't have much faith that Lin would make an exception for family. Everyone has the right to be devoured by Devantheon. That's what Lin thinks. The vegetables are moaning. Meryl doesn't care. It seems unlikely he'll be around to feel hungry for much longer anyway. Oh, evil. Well, well, welcome, my dear. Decide to show up today, hmm? I'm sorry for skipping last time. Yes, well, you learned your lesson, I hope. Though you don't seem too upset. Why would I be upset? <laughs> I see. Boy, was I wrong about you. Honestly, I'm shocked. I am not following. Lurch was tomorrow evening, is it not? Or at least that's what Aina kept telling me. Well, about that, we still don't know who you've chosen. Ah? Uh, usually it's figured out pretty early, but this time no one has come forth. I see. <laughs> I know it isn't like you to spoil the fun, but if you want the ritual done on time, you're gonna have to give me a hint. So that's why you're so nonchalant about it. I thought you already knew who I chose. Wait. <laughs> you wouldn't have. Wouldn't I? Ah, now that's the reaction I was expecting. But why him? But who knows? I get a little jealous sometimes. <laughs> I guess ancient gods, they just get jealous. Ancient evil murder gods. That's to say, oh, that is to say, Lin. Do not be absent from our sessions again. Deal, dealing with a yandere evil god. You know, this is a bit too much. Duh, you're upset, aren't you, my pet? Hmm, was I too harsh? Say, uh, I guess uh, the only this—I feel like the only decisions we're making, basically, whether or not we're sympathetic to Marrow, or do we just completely just do our job. For now, I mean, I already went um, down one path, so basically, yeah, I'll just say no. What are you talking about? You know what's best for this village, and best for me. If anything, I'm more grateful than ever. Oh, you are, huh? Of course. Thank you for delivering me from my distractions. With this, I could finally devote myself to serving you in this village. Ah, uh, what a bore. I really wanted to see you cry. Perhaps I'll cry from joy. It's not the same. I wanted you begging and pleading. But I pray to you every day. Yeah, but you don't ever mean it. Nonsense. Of course I do. This is, this is just a marriage, I feel like. This is just a, you know, two people arguing in a marriage. Uh, I've had enough of you. Get out. It just isn't the same, you know. <laughs> oh, welcome back. What did it say? Huh? Did the great Devaltheon tell you who's to sacrifice? It's... Actually, I'm not sure. It's all riddles. <laughs> oh, typical. Why does it insist on this hide-and-seek? 
Perhaps it's difficult to find amusement when you're God. If it comes down to it, we'll just check every village individually. What was that? Oh, that was uh, Aeon, actually. Perhaps it's difficult to find amusement when you're God. You have to find... Sheesh. Let's wait until tomorrow, at least. The sacrifice must be shooting themselves by now. I'm sure someone will notice something is up. Sounds good to me. Lin? Hmm? I'm sorry. I think I'm getting sick again. <laughs> again? I'm telling you, you should let pe sick people in the masses. They infect everyone else. And how are you going to check who's sick? Well, I... I think I'm going home for the day. Right, sleep it off. We have a big day tomorrow. Drink lots of water. Just, you know, be hydrated. I guess. Thank you, I will. Lin heads home, his little mind racing. It's messing with me. He just wanted to scare me. He didn't actually pick Meryl. Meryl would have told me. He would have told me, right? Meryl? But there's no answer. Oh great, he ran away. No, no he didn't. He isn't a sacrifice. And where would he run away to anyway? To the wilderness so he can be eaten by something else instead? Lin sits on the couch, gets up, but then sits back down again. He gets up a couple more times, and then he finally decides to stay down. And there he sits for the rest of the day, his thoughts running around in circles. He's still sitting there when Meryl finally shows up. Ah! Hmm? Why are you sitting here in the dark? That's creepy! Scare the crap out of me! Ah, ah, sorry. I didn't notice the sun went down. Ah, well, the vegetables are fucked. I say what I could, but it wasn't much. Oh, thanks. Sure, anyway. Good night. Meryl? Yeah? Can we talk for a bit? Ah, yes. The conversation started nobody wants to hear. But what's up? You seem a little stressed out. It's just the crops. It sucks. I see. Um, it just pisses me off if I put all that effort in and they run right away anyway. You know? I understand. It's just that, if it's just that, then fine. But you know, Marrow, I'm... If something is wrong, you tell me, right? Yeah? Of course. The house gets a little too quiet for comfort. Anyway, I have to get to sleep now. Good night. Yeah. Lin couldn't, could have easily checked if Mero was a sacrifice, but he didn't. He didn't have to. He knows already after all. He knows, but just for now, though will pretend to be convinced otherwise. Rando is dusting the temple stairs with such vigor you think he likes it. Oh, hey, feeling better? Yes, thank you. Any news on a sacrifice? Not a peep, but fear not. Rando throws the broom away with an ex extravagant gesture. It's my turn to pray today. Isn't it a bit early? Watch me. I'll get the sacrifice's identity out of that thing. I don't think you should push it. I mean, relax. I'll take care of it. Lin is left alone with a growing sense of unease. He sits down on the stairs to brood. One might wonder what exactly is the problem here. Nero has been nothing but unbearable this whole time. <laughs> Yet again, a very, again, I mean, I keep saying it. But it's a very biased narrator, isn't it? I'd say good riddance. But Lin doesn't see it that way. He remembers him and Meryl used to be very close. Best friends, even. That's how pitiful Lin's social life used to be. You see, Lin was one of those unwanted children. Well, not at first. At first, he was very much wanted. His parents had just gotten married and were on their way to their happily ever after. But then mother got ill while pregnant with Lin. She went to the great Devathion to ask for help. And the merciful Devathion helped her, of course. Vardar is the most kind being on earth after all. In exchange, it demanded the unborn child for itself. It was so excited, it never had a pet before. Mother, on the other hand, wasn't too thrilled about it. But what else could she do? Let herself and the child die? Besides, she could always just make another one. <laughs> oh my god. So she agreed. Lynn was born to serve the great Devathion. What an honor! I guess Dad. Maybe that's why Mother didn't bother loving Lin. Lin wasn't hers anymore. She made sure Lin stayed alive, but didn't waste her breath talking to him. In fact, she went out of her way to acknowledge his existence as little as possible. Father didn't think it was right, but said nothing, because he was a spineless people pleaser. But Mero was different. He and Lin were playing together, and overall they had a pleasant childhood. While ignoring all the unpleasant things, like dad leaving to die and sibling favoritism and whatnot. 
What's that thing on his head? Look, I'm saying none of them were beaten with sticks. You know, you know, they didn't have like a physically, you know, abusive childhood. Simply a emotionally ne neglectful childhood, rather. At least for uh, Lin. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a happy childhood. Anyway, it was only after Lin officially became a priest that Mero became a whiny little shit. So you're a high priest now? That's right. You'll be in charge of those sick rituals? Some of them, yes. Congratulations. Lin couldn't understand why Mero wasn't happy for him. Serving the Vilethon was ensuring the safety and happiness for the whole village. Sure, there was an occasional sacrifice or two, but it was either that or no village at all. Lin thought Mero was being unreasonable and naive. Surely he'd grown out of it. Nope. Anyway. That's why Lin isn't so sure whether to stab Mero or not. What am I to do? Killing Mero will prevent a famine. Not killing him is just me being selfish. Uh, save the crops. Why am I even thinking about this? It's the same as ever. I'm just being sentimental. That's no good. The Viotheon is testing me. I'm in failing big time. There you are. I was looking for you. Hi. How did it go with the Viotheon? Yes, as if he didn't know. Oh boy, I'm sorry to tell you this. Devathion told me who the sacrifice is. It's your brother. Oh. Sorry. Lin doesn't know how to react. Should he pretend to be shocked by the news? It seems like a huge bother right now. Y you okay there, kiddo? Hmm? Oh yes. Yes, I'm fine. Sorry you have to go through this again. Again? Uh, like your mother? Oh. Oh right, I did that. <laughs> Hmm. Anyway, there's no way Mero comes willingly. That's for sure. Will you come with me to get him? Are you sure? I could go grab him with Anon. No, no. He'll probably run away at the sight of you too. Let's just go get him. Right now? It's still early. I know he's home right now, so... Uh, he's gonna get messy, isn't it? If he starts a ruckus, we'll knock him out. You have no mercy, huh? What was that? Eh, old man's mutterings. Ignore it. You know, Randall, surprisingly empathetic, or at least sympathetic, or at least pretending to, despite, you know, willing to sacrifice a newborn child. I don't know if he's really joking about that, but it seems like, you know... It seems so far he's less of a psychopath than uh, Lin here, but still pretty evil, you know? He's, he, would, he would still sacrifice babies though, so I, mean, I don't know. Now I wonder how Anon feels. I wonder if Anon's pretty evil too. So far she seems like a pretty nice girl, but you know, I feel like you gotta be pretty evil to join like an evil cult thing for like a god. I don't know. That sacrifices humans, but uh, are you sure you want to do this? Mm hmm. I know it's difficult. No, it's fine. Are you sure? Stop asking me. Mero is surprised to see them. He was clearly expecting the priests to come after him much later. Possibly after he had miraculously come over an escape plan. Also, keep forgetting. I keep forgetting the narrator is actually, you know, the Viotheon. I assume it is anyway. It seems like. It. Uh, what's up? Look, we know it's you, kid. What are you talking about? Don't make this more difficult than it has to be. No, wait. It's not me. I swear. Then it's not me, Meryl. Not you, huh? Then show us you don't have the mark. No. In desperation, Mero attempts to push aside the old priest to get past him, but Randall has dealt with this kind of thing plenty of times. He gets Mero in a headlock. Oh, thank you for your cooperation. Let me go! Mero struggles in panic. Ow, 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 ow. Lin, a little help here! Lin helps Randall grab Mero. They start dragging Mero to the temple. He's kicking and screaming the whole way there, but it's no use. People stop and stare, but the instant Randall asks them for some help, they all become extremely busy with, with looking at the clouds. Hmm, yes, fascinating. Might it rain tonight? That'll be bad. Hmm, yep, yep. Several bumps and bruises later, Mero is thrown into the temple's wine cellar. Now behave. I will have to tie you up. You don't want to spend the last of your life being unable to move, right? I mean, that sounds pretty uncomfortable. Imagine getting a runny nose from crying and not being able to clean up. That's just gross. Thank you for your input, Mando. So now what? I'm just sitting here until evening waiting for my death? Yes, you can help yourself to some more wine. Mero isn't old enough to... 
What does it matter? The kid's about to kick the bucket anyway. It's brilliant. He won't even have to suffer the morning after. <laughs> no hangovers. I'm telling you, red wine gives me the worst hangover. There's this one time. I don't give a shit, old man. <laughs> You're lost. It's a great story. I'm gonna see if Aina has shown up yet. Actually, it's such a great story, I'm gonna tell it anyway. Ah. That was like 15 years ago during the harvest season. Being tortured to death at this point. Randall stays behind to mercilessly torture Meryl with his boring story. Right on cue, Anon appears. Here I am. So you are. We've captured the sacrifice. Oh? Uh-huh. Could you check that everything's in order in the Sacramento Hall? Sure. Uh, who's the sacrifice? Sorry, I have to visit the Viltheon. Okay. Um, I'll see you later? Yes, of course. Mm hmm? Lin, little thing, what brings you here? Is the ritual starting already? You should know I prefer it midnight. No, no, I just wanted to tell you we're ready to go once the sun sets. Why would you tell me this? It's not my problem, I just want to eat. The logistics of the ritual are on you. I know, but I thought you might want to know anyway, considering who the sacrifice is. Oh, now why will that matter? Surely I can trust my precious pet to do as it's told? Of course. Then what is this? Did you come here looking for praise? I came here to pray. Oh, well go on then. The Viothon, I... I find my heart wavering. I think I'm sad. Duh. What should I do? You do as you're told. How you feel about it, it couldn't possibly be more irrelevant. Doesn't that make me spineless? Luckily, you have enough spine for the both of us. Huh. If that was all, then leave. I want to relax before dinner. Yes. Well... Right, right. I'll see you tonight. The decision has been already made, yet Lin is still undecided. He wonders where he went wrong, but also if this is really for the best. It has to be. After all, the Valtheon has decided this. Lin will surely become an improved version of himself through this. Truly, Meru has been but a hindrance. Yes, after this, there will be no more baby brother to pamper. Only Devathion to worship, just as it should be for a good servant of God. Yes, yes, what a happy day this is. Wonderful day, a day of absolution. The ritual isn't for the crops at all. It is a gift from Lin, an offering for Devathion to forgive Lin for wasting all these years. Lin is ready now, ready to receive grace. With newfound determination, Lin makes his way down the temple stairs. He's feeling certain about himself, but is then struck by Anon's sorry face. Oh, there you are, Lin. Is something wrong? I saw who the sacrifice is. Lin, I'm so sorry. Uh, just what he didn't need. You find me, just tell me that. Huh? Oh, well, yes. I was just worried. I know it must be hard on you. Yes, so what? Excuse me? Yes, it is difficult. That's precisely why it's called sacrifice. I, I know, but... Anon, why'd you even become a high priest? Uh, what do you mean? It's been years now. I haven't seen you perform the ritual even once. Oh, ha ha ha. Ah ha ha, indeed. It's always me or Rando. Mostly me, because Rando's awful at it. It's just that I thought I could do it as long as it helps people. But I just don't have the stomach for it. I know you don't. This is a village full of wimps. 400 people whispering behind my back about what a terrible person I am. Yeah, once the ritual comes around, everyone's so glad I'm here. But the terrible one do the terrible deed so you don't have to. But don't say that. <sighs> you know what, Anon? Anon doesn't want to hear it. He has enough of Lin's holier-than-thou nonsense. I can tell you're not in the mood to talk. Which was false. Lin was definitely in the mood to talk. In fact, these are probably the most honest thoughts he has ever shared. Keeping to himself is what Anon had liked about Lin. But now she sees his true colors for the first time, and boy, does she find them ugly. But maybe if you are so incompetent, Vivathia wouldn't be so focused on me. And maybe if he wasn't so focused on me, I'd be allowed to make some mistakes. Kind of like you. All you do is bumble about making one fuck up after another. But when I do as so much slip, God rains punishment upon me. Lin, I'm sorry. About what? It's all thanks. Thanks to that, I get to better myself. I get to become what you should aim to be. I think we should end this conversation here. Am I making you uncomfortable? Yes. 
No, no, it's just... I still have a lot to do before the ritual. I see. Uh, see you later! <laughs> Awkward. That's one bridge burn right there. But it doesn't matter. Humans don't matter. Fuck humans. Lin needs none of them. Only Devaltheon is worthy of his time. Randall's mouth is still running a marathon. His captain audience looks less than thrilled. Oh, welcome back, Lin. Hello. We should decide who performs the ritual. Yes, have this conversation right in front of the very person you're about to kill. Nice. Me, right? Are you sure? I mean, can you? Randall, how many times do you think I've done this already? Uh, plenty. And you still have to ask. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no, I meant since it's Meryl. I thought he might haunt you. The only way it's gonna haunt me is if I let you do it. I can't believe how hard it is for you to kill someone. You missed the vital organs on purpose. Sheesh, kid, that's always a little uncalled for. I was just trying to be nice. Yes, very nice of you to offer to kill my brother. Thank you, Rando. Look, kid, I can appreciate you're not feeling your best today. But don't take it on your friends. Ana is probably missing for you, missing you right now. Yes, he probably is. I'm performing the ritual. Be my guess. <laughs> Sorry you had to see that. Are you always like this at work? I don't want to talk about that. How are you? Can I get you something? Like what? I don't know. Actually, no, I do know. You prefer vanilla. Wait just a moment. Lin prepares Mara a drink. Mara realizes Lin probably has the keys. Maybe he could hit him in the head with a bottle and make a run for it. Here. What is it? It's a drug. It'll make this easier for you. You mean easier for you? Hmm? I'll be high out of my mind so I don't have to, you don't have to see me, me see me miserable. And you'll play the music so loud you can't hear me scream when you rip my heart out. Hmm. You have it all figured out. <sighs> what? You know, I kind of expect this to happen sooner or later. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. But I'm still disappointed all the same. Then puts the drink on the table. I suppose it can wait for a few moments. I'm sorry, Meryl. Oh yeah, you look real sorry. Not. I am sorry. I hope you won't hold this against me. That'll be some feat considering I'll be dead. Maybe so. Still, if I could, I'd do things differently. So do it! Hmm? Let's kill someone else instead! Well, you certainly changed your attitude. Shut up, listen! You can hide their face and pretend it's me. Well, that's not gonna work. Why not? It's not like God knows what my heart tastes like. Just say, just say you can't stand a look at my face or something. No, I'm sorry. Come on, why not? I'm sorry. Why not? This needs to happen, Meryl. And while I'm torn about it, I... Real fucking torn, you're smiling! Meryl, this is what I do. I love you to bits. But I'm a holy man first and your brother second. Huh. A holy man, huh? You fancy yourself a saint? No, I'm, I mean I'm devoted myself to Devaltheon. Fuck you, Lin. Take your halo and choke on it. Meryl takes the drink from the table and downs in one go. Huh. No, I wasn't done talking. Huh. Ah, damn it, Meryl. Lin tries to shake Meryl out of it, but Meryl's mind is already on a higher plane of existence. Existent. Ah, what a heartwarming sentiment to leave me with. Poor Meryl. Come on, then. Lin walks Meryl out. They walk past the sacramental hall. That's right, pass it. Not in it, or to it, but past. And they continue all the way down to Devaltheon's altar. The one it uses to talk to the high priestess. Hello? I already told you I want the ritual done at midnight. And why is that here? Devaltheon, this is my most prized possession. Hmm. I want you to have it. That's very sweet of you, my pet. But you're overlooking one thing. You can't give me something that's already mine. No, until midnight, this is still mine. Bullshit, I put claims on it. I copyrighted him. You know, I gave you a DMCA. Uh, but you haven't claimed him yet. Amazing. Simply amazing. I've never been so annoyed and endeared at the same time. Hm. I'm giving you something that's very dear to me. If you don't like it, do what you will. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Though I'm so expecting a ritual tonight. Of course. Wouldn't it be fun to pick someone from the audience? <laughs> it would. A little surprise to shake things up. Fine. Have it your way. 
you know, have, have it your way. Isn't that like a slogan? Anyway, you could sacrifice your brother here in private. That's what you want, isn't it? Yes. Thank you, Devithon, the Benevolent. It's not like I find the ritual grotesque, but... Except you do. Hurry up before I change my mind. As you wish. I'm sure you're smart enough to figure out what happens next. I don't have to spell it out right. You get it right. Surely you know that Lin did the very thing he just announced he would do. If you figured he mercilessly murdered Marrow, congratulations, you're exactly right. He did it with a big, bright smile on his face. His drug little brother screamed in pain, completely unable to understand what happened. Have you ever been high or in a state of adrenaline rush? You're hyper-focused on the very instant that is your existence in that moment, and that moment drags on for a small eternity. Now imagine, if you will, being in such a state and then having your heart gouged out. Truly, Lin is an awful brother. The vile Theon is was pleased to have such a loyal little worshipper. Congratulations. He did it. The end. There you go. You just worship the evil god and, you know, you'll be his pet forever. I mean, in its own way, that could be like a happy ending. But well, we're not gonna accept that. Let's try a different ending. I wonder what happens instead. So all these choices, instead of being loyal and living out our destiny, let's try to rebel against the god a little bit. How about that? I'm gonna see if there's any different dialogue here. So let's see. So instead of saying, you know, when he was sick, so all the way, time travel all the way back in the beginning. So when he was sick, instead of saying, you know, that doesn't matter, let's say what's wrong. Let's be sympathetic. Oh no, do you have a fever? Don't touch me. Why? Because you're drunk and high and Devithion knows what? And you reek of blood. I see. But listen, Mero. That man just gave his life for his village. Okay. It's... I didn't, um... I didn't... Did you eat anything? Aren't you hungry? I just need some sleep. Is there anything you want? Just some rest. You're hungry, right? Please, I'll make you something. What do you want to eat? Rice porridge. Oh, thank goodness. I'll let you know when it's done. Alright. Try to get some sleep. Okay, it's slightly different there. I, I think it was the part where he tried to choke him, but I guess maybe he didn't go all the way. Because he actually cares this time. Okay, now he still tried to choke him, though. Okay. Uh, it's just being dramatic. And he even cooking rice porridge in the middle of the night. That crab legs take, takes two hours to make. Well, Lin used to, uh, is used to making deals with offerings. Human hearts for safety, and porridge for forgiveness. Must be nice being so simple-minded. Alright. Uh, oh. uh, I guess I can right-click to skip the next choice, but in case there's any, like, uh, extra cutscenes, well, I guess a visual novel is all cutscenes, but, you know, any new scenes, rather. I don't want to accidentally skip that. But let's see, so this is the part where we um, skipped out on work to go to Mother's Grave. And uh, let's see, I'll say uh, I'm not here for her. I didn't come here for her, Meryl. Huh? The fact that our mother's course has been rotting here for a year means very little to me. That's some way to put it. Why'd you even show if it was gonna be like that about it? You didn't let me finish. What more is there? I'm not here to visit the remains of some woman who shat us out. Oh my god. I don't care about her. But I care about you caring about her. I can't make heads or tails of that. Oh well. But thanks, I guess? Meryl is happy. He thinks maybe his murdering, murdering lunatic of a brother is a good person after all. <laughs> Humans are so easily swayed. You're welcome. It's just nice spending time with you. Ah, stop. Who says stuff like that? <laughs> and so they went home. Okay. There you go. So some extra scenes with the brother and actually caring about him and everything. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. Uh, and let's say, let's uh, ellipses to show some indecisiveness about killing our brother. It's not like my opinion is worth mentioning. Indeed, I'm just trying to help you. We have to fix that brother complex of yours. My what? Oh, that's got under your skin, didn't it? <laughs> I've had enough of you. Get out. Okay. I assume this is the same. Skip, 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 skip. And back here, where he was trying to hide his mark and everything, Lin says, I love you, Meryl. Huh? Thanks? I mean, that's nice. You too? <laughs> What is with this response? It's just really awkward, okay? How so? What am I supposed to say? Oh gosh, Jolly, I love you too. You're the best big bro ever. 
Yes, that would be nice. God. Anyway, I have to get to sleep now. Good night. And this should be the same. Yeah, because easily checked, but he didn't. And now we have a very uh, conspicuous choice to betray God. Well, that might be fun and all. What then? Where would he even go? I'm going to be ripped apart by beasts as soon as I exit the village's surroundings. Although, Leviathan said this would ward off monsters. At least anything smaller than it. Ah, did I just compare Leviathan to a monster? No, 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 I didn't mean it like that. Leviathan is a beautiful and wonderful and kind. Some priest I am. There you are. Okay, and let's get that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is this is when we uh this is when Randall was wrestling with uh um Marrow and everything. And then, you know, a little help here? Sure. Oh. Okay, this is different. <laughs> ah Quiet. I just wish you told me. What? Pack your things. Huh? Clothes, toothbrush, things like that. Oh what? But don't you understand? But I uh, what? In a backpack? Yes, quickly now. Mero stumbles around his room, almost tripping over Randall's corpse. Ah, <sighs> what am I doing? Um, are you throwing me out? What? Are you throwing me out because I didn't tell you about the mark? My god, no, we're leaving the village. Huh? The Violetheon gave me this necklace some time ago. It'll allow us to wander outside the village without being attacked by monsters. Huh? Then why haven't we left already? Don't be ridiculous. There's no need to leave. Yes, there was. There's a bloody monster living in the temple. Mero. Mero shuts up. The carcass in the room serves as a nice reminder not to anger Lin. We have everything we could ever ask for in here. Honestly, I'm more than a little myth we have to leave. Well, I could just go by myself? Huh. Just get your things. We need to hurry. Meanwhile, Anon shows up for work. Okay, this is, this is, I feel like it's branching a little bit. Was that the last choice we had to make before we had to sacrifice? I wonder? I don't know. It was around, yeah, that, that, that Betrayed God was definitely the last choice we had to make, I feel like. Anyway. Here I am! But no one answers. Guys? Weird. Are they both praying? She wanders around, but there's no sight of Rando or Lynn. Well, Rando's dead. I don't know if he deserved to die necessarily, but, you know. He isn't exactly the nicest person around, and, you know, he did- He, he is serving an evil god and everything, so... Now, uh, it's self-defense, I guess. <sighs> Did they bail out on me? I'm gonna have to tell Devi, though. We don't know who the sacrifice is. All by myself? She envisions Devi on furry. Or furry? Furry? Anyway. <sighs> Idiot. Moron. You pathetic piece of human filth. Baka. This bloody village has barely 400 people. How can you not find one sacrifice? No. A lower level priest approaches her. Is something wrong? I can't find Rand or Lin. You don't need to worry about that. We went to pick up the sacrifice, I think. Randall said he thought of who it was. I saw him leave Lin a while ago. Oh, who's the sacrifice? I don't know. I was just passing by. But I think Lin knew them, though. He looked pretty down about it. Lin did. Anon finds that to be curious. She doesn't recall Lin ever feeling sad over any sacrifice. In fact, Anon found it creepy how little Lin seemed to care in general. Except when it came to... Ah! It's Meryl! It has to be! Who? Lyndon's little brother. I hope everything's alright. When did they leave again? Like I said, it's been a while. Anon gets a bad feeling. It shouldn't take this long. Lynn's house is just around the corner. You got everything? Probably. Meryl. Huh? Pull yourself together. I don't want people asking why you look like you've seen the ghost. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. Everything's fine. Just leave it to me. Right. They leave home, leaving Rando's corpse to rot on the floor in the summer heat. It doesn't matter. Lynn knows people will figure out what he did. He doesn't plan to stick around for the consequences anyway. And the two of them make their way to the village's gate. People will keep stopping Lynn to say their hellos and ask about the coming ritual. Everyone wants to know who the sacrifice is. Lynn just smiles and says he doesn't know yet. He exchanges pleasantries as if nothing is wrong. It makes Meryl really uncomfortable. Right as they're about to exit, a familiar face shows up. Alin! Oh, hello, Anon. You look worried. Is something wrong? Huh? I'm... 
I can't find Randall, and where are you going? Randall went to pick up the sacrifice, I think. And it turns out we're low on mushrooms. I'm gonna go grab some, so we'll have enough for the ritual. What are you talking about? That's not your job, send someone else. Meryl said he knows a good spot nearby. We'll be right back. Cut the shit, Lin. It's Meryl, isn't it? Lin doesn't answer. He's busy calculating whether Aina will let them go. It seems unlikely. Don't do anything stupid, Lin. You of all people know how it is. Sorry. Sorry, my ass. You're such a hypocrite. How many little brothers did you kill already? Oh, but oh no. Bow for we sacrificed yours. Aenon, I can see you're very upset. Yes, I'm upset. You're not this stupid, Lin. This isn't even anything out there. You're running off to die. You're leaving us to die too. Lin figures this conversation has run its course. Not to mention Marrow keeps fidgeting about as if he's expecting Lin to change his mind now. Lin turns around to open the gates. However, Aenon had to come alone. Next to her are some other priests Lin never bothered to get to know. One of them grabs Nair Marrow by the collar of his shirt. And roughly one instant later, two screams echo across the area. The man is screaming because Lin just stabbed him in the eye. Marrow is screaming because he's a little bitch. <laughs> I suppose he was surprised seeing the man get stabbed. Still, Aina was plenty surprised too, but all she did was gasp. Besides, Mero already saw this happen to Randall. God damn, how many times do you tend to be shocked by the same thing? It's just a little murder, don't worry about it. Anyhow, while everyone's busy screaming and being surprised, Lin pulls Mero away with him. Turns out Aina was wrong and Lin is exactly that stupid. The other priests had every intention of following Lin and Mero in case they ran. But when push came to shove, they chickened out. None of them fancied the possibility of getting new eye piercings, and all of them were extremely worried over the wounded one. Yep, no time to chase the sacrifice is gonna save our village. This random guy we're now in friends with is the highest priority now. Well, maybe some of them are friends, but let's not fuss over the details. Lin and Meryl get away with no further incidents. Are, are we safe? For now, probably. But I'm sure they'll send someone after us. My guess will be hunters. They know how to move around here. So Mero, we need to keep going until we're outside of Valtheon's influence. Huh? If there are any strong monsters this close to the village thanks to the Valtheon. That means as long as we're here, people will surely come after us. But I doubt they chase us to where there are monsters. Right. They catch their breath for a moment and continue on. Meanwhile, Aenon's party has retreated back to the temple. The injured one is being treated. He's an equal amount of pain as Aenon's in distress. I can't believe this. Lin of all people, the hypocrite son of a bitch! That fucking asshole! <laughs> High Priest Anon, what should we do? I, um, I'm... I'm just... Has anyone seen Rando yet? I don't think so. Don't tell me he ran away too. Anon sits with her head on her hands. How do I break these news to the great Devaltheon? Um, should I? Do you need me to come with you? Anon is tempted. Sharing the blame sounds good. No. No, I'll do it. Thanks, though. She smiles at the others and goes to visit the altar. Well, I guess Anon's dead, too. <laughs> hello, hello. I trust you're here to tell me the ritual's ready to start. Actually, um... About that. Mm. The benevolent Devathia looks absolutely menacing. It takes every shred of courage Anon has left to tell Devathia what happened. I'll spare you from what, down, from what went down afterwards. Anon lived to tell the tale. Oh, I'm surprised. But it'll be years before she's actually ready to tell it to, tell it to anyone. And how lucky Devaldia was to spare Anon's sorry soul. After all, from here on out, she's the only high priest available. Good for her. She got a promotion. As for some others. Lin? Hmm? What will happen to the village now? I wouldn't worry about that, Meryl. How can I not? The village is pretty sturdy. It can take a flood or two. Huh? What? Oh god, Lin, no. I'm talking about the people. Oh. Oh, indeed, you basket case. Is everyone gonna starve to death because of me? <laughs> the villagers too will be fine. They will? Yes, Devaltheon is very kind. Can't believe you're still saying that. But it is. This isn't the first time we failed to deliver the sacrifice. There was this girl who killed herself before we could sacrifice her. Oh. But you, do you know what? Vathion forgives us. Instead of the girl, we sacrifice her whole family. Hmm. Uh. Lin fully intended that to make Meryl feel better. It didn't, though. 
Don't worry, the ritual will be held with or without you. Vardia will keep everyone safe and sound. Just as I will keep you. Meryl found that a completely unnecessary parallel to draw. So, that's what happened to Lynn and Meryl. They chose to leave behind the nameless village, and journey from the middle of nowhere to the edge of somewhere. Lynn is certain there exists other villages. Meryl just follows. He has no idea what else to do. So perhaps this is a happy ending for them. But what about poor Valdion? It was heartbroken. Poor thing. How could Lynn do that? Valdion has so much faith in him. He even gave him the means to escape, trusting he wouldn't. But what do you know? Humans are the scum of the earth. After all the love and care Devathan had given Lin, this is the thanks it got. Devathan was absolutely devastated. You won't let this one slide. You just watch your back, Lin. One of these days, you'll get what's coming to you. But until then, enjoy the delights of living on the run. And that's that. That's the story. Surely there's some grand adventure to follow, but I'm not gonna tell it now. So settle for this load of bullshit. Everyone lived happily ever after, except Rando, except a Anon, except mostly everyone in the village who probably, you know, got you know, sacrificed a whole bunch and everything. <laughs> Alright. There you go. That's the other ending. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? What's this? The story's over, but you've been very kind to Mero. Why would you do that? Perhaps you're wondering how you fuse about all this. You didn't have any say in it after all. Well, let me tell you. Despite the mosquitoes, the mud, and the general unpleasantries of the forest, Mero is pleased to find himself still alive. Whenever he happens to glance down the mark the Valthan had given him, he's filled with guilt. Perhaps he should have died. Thinking that someone else did so in his stead is a very somber thought. But at least Lin seems to have wanted it this way. So whatever. Mero's still alive. And despite the bogs, the bushes, and the bugs, he's happy to be alive. And that's that, I think. The end. Alright, there you go. I guess maybe we get a little extra, because we picked the right choices and everything. So there you go! That's that! We get the, uh, we get like a not-so-great ending, and then we get like a somewhat happier ending, sort of. You know, where we rebel against the god. I guess either way, it's not like the super-duper happy ending, but you know, at least, um... At least uh, Lin and Meryl survive in that ending and everything. Uh, Lin is still kind of a psychopath though, but at least he li he loves his brother, <laughs> you know, at least there's that, I guess. There you go. A little, I don't know, I don't know what you call this. I guess it's pretty funny at times. A little dark, well I mean a lot, actually very dark, you know, it's very dark actually. I don't know what you call it. It's silly, I guess. What a s little silly little visual novel where a bunch of people get murdered, and there's human sacrifices and everything. It's kind of creepy, actually. You know, without any of the humor, it's actually incredibly horrible and horrific. And it kind of reminds me of a lot of horror games, actually, where, like, you know, you you like, you like go into, like, a very, like, um, rural village and everything, and they're, like, there's, like, a weird cult, you know, and everything. They're praising, like, a evil god in the background. And one night, when you're visiting this village, they all attack you and try to sacrifice you or whatever. It's kind of like that, except you're from the perspective of one of the high priests, I guess, you know? It's kind of like, yeah, I guess we call this it's just a comedy horror game. We'll put some drama, though. It's not it's not full-on comedy, definitely more on the drama side of, uh, of the conflict of uh, being Lin, I guess, which is interesting. I like it. I like it. It's, it's just a short little story, but, you know, I think it wraps up pretty nicely. There you go. Um, I guess, yeah, that's it for the Valtheon. He's very rude. He swear everyone swears a lot in this game. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's just how it is. I don't know. There's a content warning. I, on the game page, there was a content warning about explicit language, you know? But there you go. Anything else I want to say? I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else I want to say. Um, I guess, well, I don't know. I, I do like it. Again, I, I like it because it's definitely focused on the characters. You know, instead of like, because the, 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 definitely there was an option, definitely for the story to go like, oh, and thus we destroy the god, and you know, bring happiness to the whole village. We never, it didn't really go that way, but I like it. it. It's, it's, I guess, I guess the word I'm looking for is twisted. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a very twisted story, where like, you know, not everyone gets to be, not, not exactly a happy ending for everyone, but definitely it's a story of the character Lin, 
and, you know, his troubles and everything. Either choosing an evil god or his brother, despite being a weird sort of crazy person, you know, that doesn't really care about killing people, but that's fine. Makes the character interesting. But anyway, but there you go. Uh, again, that was it for Devaltheon. And uh, if you're on YouTube, I guess if you didn't know, I stream these games live on Twitch, so check me out over there if you're interested. And uh, I also have other playthroughs available on the YouTube channel, so you can look for those if you want. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then.